Here's reason why. First of all, this vehicle has only been out for a couple of years and many people have never seen it. They don't know what it is because few dealerships sell them. For me, that's a con. When I wanted to purchase Vanderhall, I had to ride two and a half hours away, almost three hours away. There was a closer dealership nearby that didn't have the discounts that I was looking for, but they no longer sell him anymore. I asked him and I said, why aren't you selling those anymore? The reason is this next con, reason two. If you need parts, it takes forever. And what I mean by parts is upgrades, accessories. I haven't had any problems whatsoever with this Vanderhall, meaning I haven't had to take you to the shop because I've broken down on the side of the road. Reason number three. The other con is I can hear a little bit of rattle every once in a while, and I believe it's coming from that metal clip on the boot. I can hear and I can feel a slight vibration when I gradually engage the throttle. I purchased it maybe a day or two after. Right underneath the glove box, when you floor it, you can listen to this vibration, which supposedly is normal as what I've been told. Reason number four. The other con is that the seats move forward and back, but the backrest doesn't incline or decline. It's just stuck in one position. Seats are uncomfortable when driving on a bumpy road for a lengthy period. I just feel like there should be a little more cushion. I feel like sometimes I need a pad or something underneath my butt while driving. Reason number five. I know these things are made out in Utah, but they use steel bolts to hold them on. On the east side, I had a lot of moisture and rust. So why not use aluminum or cast? When I got it, it was like that. Reason number six. This thing is very low to the ground and you must be extra careful. I mean extra, extra careful. I've been through many places and was hesitant, even going over a few speed bumps and thinking that I was going to hit something. And luckily I have it. But if you pull up on a parking lot and there's a curve up front, you definitely don't want to pull in all the way forward because you're going to run right into it. Reason number seven. You can't just go and take this thing to a quick change or even get your old change done if you don't want to do it because you can't even drive it through. All the rear tires are in the middle, so you got to do the services yourself, driving about three or four hours. And who wants to put all those miles in this beautiful Vanderhall unless you're going out for a nice scenic route and you're making a long day trip out of it and you just want to go and hang out at the dealership. Why do they do old chains and service? And it probably takes about two or three hours to get that done. I made a mistake thinking the engine work could be performed at any GM dealer. Nah, they won't touch it because it is a custom vehicle. Whenever I needed something done, I had to leave the machine and pay Uber a hundred dollars to get home and a hundred to go back and pick up the darn thing. Chevy dealers will not touch this auto cycle since they do not work on custom vehicles. You can make a very costly mistake by not checking with your local GM dealer before buying this auto cycle. Reason number eight. How do you like this news? The national law firm Barron and Bud announced it. It's investigating claims regarding a potential defect in the Vanderhall Venice, Laguna, and Carmel three-wheel auto cycles that may cause the vehicle to crash uncontrollably. There may be a potential defect with these vehicles involving instability when braking. This lack of stability may cause the car to veer unexpectedly to the right when the brakes are applied. Several people have been involved in deadly crashes involving the Vanderhall three-wheel auto cycles. In these accidents, the drivers of the Vanderhalls have seemingly and unexplainably lost control and crashed. The Vanderhall auto cycles do not fall under the same regulations and safety requirements as typical vehicles, said Baron and Bud attorney Brian Green. This loophole means these vehicles can be hazardous and many Vanderhall owners do not know the risks of driving them on public roadways. Now that's a massive con for anyone who values their lives. Reason number nine. The following reason comes from a review I found on the internet. The guy bought a 2020 Venice Blackjack with a few issues. Issues could have been prevented if the manufacturer had examined the unit for quality before shipping it to my dealer. His steering column boot is not installed correctly. The speedometer is off by five to seven miles per hour and the huge issue is the finish on the hood. Sure, matte paint can get imperfections, but his hood had spots, swirls, and scratches. VH has agreed to replace the speedometer, but they stated the boot is just for dust and is not an issue to them, and have refused to replace the hood. That's unacceptable. When you spend 25K on a vehicle, you expect it to be 100% correct. Reason 10. The customer service, let's just say it's horrible, and most dealerships have no idea how to work on Vanderhall. 
With a paucity of dealers, you think they'd be more geographically sympathetic and willing to work with you, but they're not. To sum it up, I fell in love when I first saw Vanda Hall Venice. I thought it was the coolest thing ever, and they are incredible. Don't get me wrong, they are fantastic and fun to drive, but not for 30 grand. For that fortune, you can buy some decent cars that are fun to drive and offer some practicality. Let's look at the details. The area below the grill is flat-faced when it could have been more like a Formula One cowling. On the side of the car, we see gaps and separations where they don't have to be. The hood is bolted down with screws and you can't just pop open the hood. You have to unbolt and remove it. Looking down through the front suspension, you find the rusty drive axles. Right above the wheels is fenders with edges that look like they came fresh off the bandsaw, unfinished, unpainted, and there it is, raw sheet plastic. Behind the seats is a small cubby hole that should give you some storage space, but it doesn't. Since the area is divided by a brace, the seat doesn't move forward enough to access it. You can put a gym bag in there if the bag is empty and rolled up. That space is entirely unusable. On the floor between the two foot wells, you have this open-ended bracket. These things don't have a roof. If you're out in the rain, that will fill with water. Moisture trapped in there will cause a problem. And again, as with everything in this car, it looks cheap and ugly. The gap between the steering and instruments is wide open. Best advice, don't drive in the rain. Make sure you park in the garage. I could go on all day mentioning all these details. Overall, the Vanderhall Venice is a diamond in the rough. Unfortunately, the car feels too cheap and the engine leaves much desired. The whole experience Venice gives you leaves you wanting more. 